till now we have seen everything except this inner while loop now let's try to ask ourselves what is this inner while loop doing this is the critical part in this analysis rest of it is very trivial in this the hardest part to understand or the most important part that you should get is this inner while loop right because that's the leap this whole thing that we have done till now is very straightforward right now if you look at this what is this trying to do this while line this line this line here is simply doing a comparison operation okay let me explain this to you with a diagram suppose if this is my array a it is trying to compare the element in a j which with each of the elements in a j minus 1 up to a 1 so it first compares with j minus 1 then j minus 2 then j minus 3 up to element 1 that's what this is doing right it is trying to see it is doing a comparison operation it is comparing a i where i will go from j minus 1 up to 0 look at this we initialized i with j minus 1 and we'll run this loop till the time i is greater than 0 which means till i equals to 1 right that's the maximum that we can run this loop up to so this is basically comparing the element that i have in key which is nothing but aj with each of the elements element that i have in aj which is my key this is my key here with each of the elements in aj minus 1 up to a1 up to a1 till the time this condition is met right that's what so this is doing a comparison operation what is this doing this is basically doing a swap type of operation right in other words if aj minus 1 is larger is larger than aj this is going to move aj minus 1 to the right by one step that's what it's exactly doing right it's moving this element it's basically doing this transformation it's taking this moving it to the next step similarly if this element is greater than my key or aj it will move this to the right so by swap i don't mean swapping two variables i mean moving the variable from its location to the next location right that's what i mean by swap here so this line is basically doing a swap and this is basically a simple decrement operator so that i decrement my i from j minus 1 up to 0 right so if you look at these two operations the two operations that are happening here there is a swap operation that's happening so there is a swap operation that's happening and there is a comparison operation that's happening now to understand how many times this will be executed and this will be executed and this will be executed we need to go slightly into more details for example imagine this is my array a imagine this is my array a so my aj which is my key is let's say element 8 which means this whole array is already pre-sorted right that's how insertion sort works in every iteration i take element aj and try to insert it into an already sorted array from a1 to aj minus 1 that's the core crux of the insertion sort right so i take this element i compare it with this first element this element is now greater than 6 so how many comparisons have i done here how many comparisons have i done here i have done only one comparison the moment i realize 8 is greater than 6 i don't i don't move my 6 anymore i don't have to swap so the number of swaps I have done here is equal to zero. This is the best case, right? I just, because this is already sorted. This eight is already greater than the largest element here. So I just have performed one comparison and zero swaps, right? Next case, this is case one. This is case one. Now let's go to case two. Now let's assume that my aj, my key is not eight, but four. Everything else stays the same here. If it was not 8 but 4, what would happen? I would compare 4 with 6 and realize that 6 is greater than 4. So I would move this to the right. I would again compare 4 with 3. right? I would again compare 4 with 3 and realize that 4 is greater than 3. right? And hence, I don't have to worry about moving 3. So how many comparisons have I done here? I've done two comparisons. How many swaps have I done? How many move to the right? By swap, I mean moving to the right. How many have I done here? I've done only one. Now let's take an extreme case three. In case three, let's assume this is my key. I will, this element is large, is smaller than six. It is smaller than three. It is smaller than two. It is smaller than one. So all these elements would get moved to the right. If you think about it, 
So how many comparisons have I done? I have done four comparisons here. How many swaps have I done here? Four swaps. This is for a given J. Here my J equals to 5 if you think about it. My J equals to 5 because I have four elements here and this is the fifth element. So for J equals to 5, what is the maximum? This is the key thing. What is the minimum number of comparisons? What is the minimum number of comparisons? The minimum number of comparisons is 1. What is the minimum number of swaps? The minimum number of swaps is 0. This would happen if the ajth element is already in the sorted order. I would just, this is the best case, right? This is the best case. This is the best case because I'm just doing one comparison and one swap. So for any j, in this case, j equals to 5, the minimum number of comparisons is 1, the minimum number of swaps is 0. Now let's say what is the maximum? What is the maximum number of comparisons? ij has to be compared with every element if i if aj is smaller than each of them then it has to be compared with every one of them right this is the worst case this is the worst case here this is the worst case here this is this case is in between the best and the worst so how many comparisons i am making here four comparisons or in other words i am making j minus 1 comparisons because I'm going to compare this ajth element with each of the elements from a1 to aj minus 1. So for a given j, for a given j, the minimum number of comparisons and swaps is 0 and the maximum number of comparisons will be j minus 1. And what about the maximum number of swaps? What about the maximum number of swaps or move to the right? It is also j minus 1 for a given j. Right? So these, these are two key important things. These are very important things. These two are very key points. Now here, this loop will run for various values of j. That's another important thing, right? j can go from 2 to n, where n is nothing but a dot length. So if you write it down, let's write down, okay? When j, what is the minimum value of j? j equals to 2. When j equals to 2, what is the minimum number of comparisons? 1. What is the maximum number of comparisons? If you look at this formula, it is j minus 1. So this is going to be also 1. Right? Similarly, when j equals to 3, remember this inner loop, this inner loop, this loop is inside the for j equals to. So this will run when j equals to 2. This will run. This will run when j equals to 2. This will run when j equals to 3, 4, up to n. It will run in each of these instances. So when j equals to 3, what is the minimum number of comparisons? Minimum number of comparisons is still 1. What is the maximum? It is j minus 1, which is 2. What happens when j equals to 4? The minimum will still remain 1. What about the maximum? Maximum is 3. So on and so forth when j equals to n. right? Because the maximum value that j can take is a dot length, which is nothing but n. Remember, a dot length is equal to n. Don't forget that. right? Now, when this happens, what are the minimum number of comparisons? 1. What about the maximum number of comparisons? It will be n minus 1. Because it's j minus 1, right? I was about to write j minus 1, but it should be n minus 1. Right? So this, this is just comparisons. Similarly for swaps. Okay? So if you look at swaps, right? What is the minimum number of swaps? The minimum number of swaps is 0 every time. The minimum number of swaps will be 0. What is the maximum number of swaps? Maximum number of swaps will be 1, 2, 3, so on, so forth, n minus 1. So if you want to understand how many times this comparison operation will run, you just need to sum up all of these. If you sum up all of these for various values of j, right? you would understand how many times would this comparison operator run and how many times the swap operation will run. Right? The number of times this swap operation will run, this decrement operation also will run the same number of times. Right? So look at this. The minimum number of times the comparison operator will run is equal to n minus 1. Because j is from 2 to n, there are n values here. 1 plus 1 plus 1, n minus 1 times. This is the minimum. What about the maximum? The maximum is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus so on so forth 
n minus 1. This is the maximum. And if you know how to sum n numbers, sum of n numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2. Or in this case, it is n minus 1 into n by 2. This is the maximum number of times the comparison operator will run. Okay, this is simple arithmetic progression that you might have studied in high school. Right, if you want to sum n numbers, the sum of n numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2. So sum, sum of the first n minus 1 numbers is n minus 1 into, this is multiplied by n by 2. This is the maximum number of comparisons that can happen. This is the minimum number of comparisons that can happen. Similarly, minimum number of swaps is 0. The maximum number of swaps is again n minus 1 into n by 2. This is the minimum and this is the maximum number of swaps. So when you're doing this time analysis here, there are two numbers here. There is a minimal number and there is a maximal number. The minimal number, minimum number of comparisons here is n minus 1. The maximum number of comparisons is n into n minus 1 by 2. Similarly, the minimum number of swaps is 0. Similarly, the minimum number of decrements is 0. The maximum number here would be, again, I'm writing minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum. Maximum again here is n into n minus 1 by 2. Here also n into n minus 1 by 2. Sorry, n into n minus 1 by 2. Okay, remember this is the minimum and this is the maximum. And obviously each of these lines will have a constant amount of time. This might take C5 microseconds. This might take C6 microseconds. This might take C7 microseconds. Now if you want to analyze, what is the minimum here? It is C5 into n minus 1. This is the minimum. Here it is 0, here it is 0. Now, there is a small mistake that I have done here. If you notice, this is a comment. This is a comment. Comments don't get executed. Your compiler, if you are writing C program or Java program, your compiler simply ignores this and it will not execute. So C3 will be equal to 0. Okay, Because you don't have to execute a command, uh, a comment. A processor will simply ignore this. It will not execute this. Right? So now if you sum up everything, now if you sum up this whole thing, this will tell you how many microseconds would your whole code take, both the minimum time and the maximum time. Right? You just have to multiply C5 by n minus 1 to get the minimum. C5 with n into n minus 1 by 2. So this will be C5. Okay, I'm trying to write it carefully because there is very little space n into n minus 1 by 2. Okay. Similarly here. So the total time, if you want to think about it, will look like this. Okay. Let's write it down. So the total time will be C1 into N1. Okay. C1 into N. Sorry. C1 into N. I'm sorry. Sorry. My bad. C1 into N for the first line. Okay. Let's look at the second line. Plus C2 into N. Plus, what about third line? Third line is a comment. So C3 equal to 0. So this whole thing will become 0. Okay, the second line is n minus 1. The third line is 0. The fourth line, the fourth line is again C4 into n minus 1. Okay, C4 into n minus 1. What about the fifth line? Fifth line, there are two cases. There is a minimal case. Let's also write the maximal case here. Right? Let, let's write it as two cases. Okay? In the, in the minimal case, what would it be? In the minimal case, it would be C5 into n minus 1. It would be C5 into n minus 1. Okay? What about these two steps? Minimas are going to be 0. Okay? Because you don't have to worry about it. You simply don't have to worry about it. So it will be 0 and 0. What about the last step? The last step is n minus 1 into C8. So C8 into n minus 1. This is the minimal. Now let's write down the maximal. Okay. The C1 will remain the same. C2 will remain the same. Right. C3 will be 0. C4 also will remain the same. Right. If you look at C4, C4 also stays the same. There is no min max for that. From C5 things will change. So C5 will be plus C5 into n into n minus 1 by 2. Okay. Similarly, C6 into n into n minus 1 by 2. 
C7 also same thing, C7 n into n minus 1 by 2 plus C8 into n minus 1. Now remember here, this is the, so this is the minimum time or this is the best case time it would take and this is the worst case or the maximal time it would take. And remember, when, when does the best case happen? If this is already in the sorted order, this is the best case. If this is the smallest element compared to all of them, you get the worst case. Okay, let's remember that. Okay, that intuition is very, very important. So the best case and the worst case, remember C1 is a constant. C1 is like, okay, one microsecond. C2 is also a constant, like two microseconds. Okay, C4 is also a constant. Okay, C4 will be maybe 1.5 microseconds. So if you look at your insertion sort algorithm, see in your time and space analysis, what you want to understand is as the input size changes, right? As the input size changes, how does my space and time change? Now remember, these are independent. The time it takes to perform this operation is independent of the size of my array. It is independent of n, right? So if I sum up all of this, if I sum up all of this, I can write this as, I can write this as some a n plus b, where a is of course, a is a combination of c1, c2, c4, c5, c8, right? Similarly, b is a combination of c1, c2, c4, c5, c8. So I can write this, okay, where a, where a is a combination of, of course, a will contain c1, if you write it, okay? Similarly, a will contain c2, so on and so forth. So a is basically a function of c1, c2, c4, c5, c8, but it's a constant. Remember, a is a constant. Similarly, b is a constant. Given an array of size n, the only thing that changes here is n. So the total time it takes, the best case, the best case time it takes to run insertion sort is a n plus b, okay, where I can compute these constants a and b using c1, c2, c4, c5, c8, which are themselves constants. So as the size of the array that is given to me increases, the only thing that changes will be n. This is the best case, right? Now let's look at the worst case. In the worst case, if I sum up all of them, I can write their sum. Remember, I can write their sum as a into n square because n into n minus 1, if you multiply these two, you get an n square term. You get an n square term, right? So the worst case, I can write it as a n square plus b n plus some c. Of course, here again, your a, b, c are going to be arrived at using c1, c2, c4, c5, c6, c7, c8 and 2 because you have division by two here, right? So in the best case, in the best case, I'll tell you why I'm writing it as a n plus b and not exactly in terms of c1, c2. We'll learn that in the next few videos. Don't worry about that. But in a nutshell, in a nutshell, what I can say is in the best case, in the best case, the runtime or the time it takes to run my insertion sort, the runtime of insertion sort on n elements, in the best case is a n plus b, where a and b are constants. And the worst case, and the worst case is a n square plus b n plus c. Okay, where again, I need to compute a, b, c. This a and this a may not be same. So let's write it as a dash, b dash, c dash, just to be clear, right? Because these numbers are going to be different from these a and b. So just to avoid confusion, let's write it as a dash, b dash, c dash, three different constants. This a dash is different from a. So in the best case, if you look at this function, again, I'll go into what these functions are, why they're useful in the next few videos. But in a nutshell, in the best case, my insertion sort on n numbers can be executed in a n plus b time, in a n plus b microseconds, where a and b are constants. In the worst case, I can compute I can, I can perform my insertion sort in a dash n square plus b dash n plus c dash microseconds, where a dash, b dash, c dash are constants, which I can compute in terms of c1, c2, so on and so forth. Okay, so we'll stop here for the time complexity. So here, what are we doing? We are only looking at time here. We are looking at how many microseconds is it taking for me to run. But what about space? 
space complexity how much memory am i using so when you're computing space complexity when you're using when you're computing space complexity we should not add the space that is given for a see a is of length n that is given to us as input that is given to us as input right in addition to the input how much additional space are we using let's look at it right we are creating a variable called j we are creating a variable called key we are creating a variable called i there are only three variables that i am creating any other variable am i creating here nothing right a is already given to me as input so don't worry about a apart from the input that i am given what all are the variables i am creating i am creating j i am creating key i am creating i there are only three variables that i am creating there are only three variables that i am creating and these three variables are independent whether i have the length of the array as 10 or 100 or 1000 whatever is the input size i am still creating only three variables right so let's write it down for as far as time is concerned there is a best case and worst case as far as space is concerned i am only creating three variables I'm only creating three variables and this has nothing to do with my n okay so that space that I am using is independent of n because in this it's a constant right if you think about it this is a constant this is a constant value this is independent of n because I'm not using n in the formula here right we'll stop here with respect to time and space complexity but we'll build on top of these these are the key things here mind me so this, this, and this, these are the three key things we'll build upon this to understand space and time complexity better over the next few videos.